and you're willing to be uncomfortable. You know, I actually, I made a YouTube video about the number one secret of successful people. And uh, I'll just give you the answer right here. Uh, the number one secret of successful people is Right, for those of you who made it past point A, uh, welcome to point B. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, remind us, we'll send you a cookie. Uh, <laughs> when you continuously put yourself in challenging and uncomfortable situations, eventually you will succeed. The law of familiarity will help you feel more and more comfortable as you expose to this ch yourself to this challenge every day. Yeah, this is something that's come up in a lot of these, um, these books. It's a point that bears repeating. Uh, the comfort zone is a very, very dangerous place to be. In life, to be honest, it's a pretty dangerous place to be. Uh, but particularly in the context of poker, if you're in a comfort zone in poker, your, your days are numbered, effectively. And this is why you know the best professional in the world from 2008, for example, if he continued playing that way, when he was at the top of the game, if he continued playing that way, he would be probably the biggest fish rig in the world right now. Um, and as soon and there as there are people like that, <laughs> oh, there, there's definitely people like that. There are people who, when I started playing spins, were some of the best regs who just got like washed away by the sands of change. Um, like you have to continuously adapt in this game. It's that phrase that I've heard before: is is just if you're not going forward, you're going backwards in this game. And and staying in your comfort zone is is exactly how that happens to people. They get themselves in a rhythm. They have some good results. They find out what they're doing is good, and then they just completely stop adapting, and they don't they don't change anything about their game because they feel like they've cracked it. They feel like they've they've already got the strategy down pat. But the strategy in this game is continuously changing, and one of the things you've got to do is be willing to make. I know that we said you can't rid yourself of your style, but you must continue to add and make changes to your game, and push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And I'm going to give a very brief example of of. Um, of something that you need to add to your game, for example, that pushes you outside your comfort zone. One thing that we've done in my group sessions for the last two weeks is explore donking in a lot of spots against mm -hmm. fish. Donking flops, donking turns. And, and in a lot of Tomo sessions, he's been working on the uh, button versus the big blind strategy, where the big blind is donking quite a lot. Uh, and he's been, he's been helping people work that into their games against regs and fish. Donking is a really uncomfortable thing to do. It's really weird. Uh, but there's a lot of EV in, it, in in using dogs against regs and fish. And I know that when I was battling, um, I played one of the best heads up regs in the world and he had a pretty high donk and it was absolute murder to play against. And at that time I wasn't donking against him because I hadn't learned the strategy. Um, but the guy, like, the guy that I played, if we use him as the example, he at some point decided I'm going to build donks into my strategy and what would have happened is he would have started doing it it would have felt uncomfortable and he would no doubt have been making mistakes when he first started doing it but he learned a bit more and he learned a bit more and he kept using it and he realized when it was working well and he realized when it wasn't working well and when he started to eliminate situ situations that weren't working well, no doubt it made a big improvement on his EV. So he broke through the comfort barrier, suffered through the uncomfortable period where he didn't really know uh, how to use it effectively. And he worked and he worked to the point where he got it to a comfortable place again. And his EV increased. And that's how the best players get to the top of the game is that they consistently break through that uncomfortable zone and that, that sort of place of uncertainty. Um, and they refine this new strategy until it becomes comfortable once again. But it's a process that never stops. You always need to be, in terms of poker and life, I'll leave the life to Jack because I know you've got a lot to chime in here. But in terms of okay. poker, You've got, to, you've got to be ready and willing when someone says to you, I've got a really useful strategy you should try. You've got to be willing to go out there and test it for yourself and feel uncomfortable and feel a little bit lost and survive that period until you come through the other side. Jack, I know you've probably got all the... Uh... When, you're, when, you're, when you're growing, um, it's always uncomfortable. All right. So there's a book, it's called um, uh, So Good They Can't Ignore You. And in this book, it talks about deliberate practice, which means like, let's say, studying in solvers or reviewing hands 
and it talks about why most people don't do deliberate practice like they don't want to spend you know thirty minutes in a GTO per day or an hour or whatever and most people don't want to do it because it's so uncomfortable okay and your brain gets tired and your brain is exhausted it's not as comfortable as sitting on a couch and watching you know Game of Thrones right uh, just like going to the gym is not as comfortable like lifting weights or really heavy weights is not as comfortable as sitting on on the couch and, and watching TV um, but if you want to grow your body you go to the gym and you lift heavy weights if you want to grow your mind specifically in poker um, you're gonna have to lift heavy weights which is you know in this case uh, Insta GTO or, or GTO work and you're gonna have to lift those weights and it's not gonna be sometimes it's not gonna be fun uh, it's gonna feel uncomfortable your brain is gonna you might feel exhausted you might even feel anxiety um, those feelings are gonna come and what it says is that um, the best way you really want to combat that is don't overwhelm yourself like do uh, let's say if like uh, your uncomfortable point is like after 15 minutes of study you get really uncomfortable um, just do 15 minutes per day and then like slowly push it um, slowly push it to the point where your comfort zone is ex expanded like you're you're able to study more time now and you're slowly doing that in an incremental kind of way uh, and I can use the same example for myself quickly with public speaking right when I when I first started public speaking I, did, I was scared to you know stand up and, and, and say my name in front of people or, or, or introduce myself and then now I'm doing improv shows uh, with like 50 people so like you in, you slowly get to that point where you push past the discomfort you push you push you push you push and then eventually it becomes more comfortable but it's always still gonna be a little bit uncomfortable you're never gonna be comfortable studying two hours of poker per day it's not going to be comfortable you're not gonna you're probably you're probably not gonna want to do that it's not mm. going to be a very comfortable thing not as comfortable uh, as sitting on the couch and passively watching fucking you know house of cards for two hours right like it's just not it's just never gonna happen but you can build it but you do those things because you know they're gonna they're gonna help you uh, move forward and grow in life and you're willing to be uncomfortable. You know, I actually, I made a YouTube video about the number one secret of successful people. And uh, I'll just give you the answer right here. Uh, the number one secret of successful people is um, how long and how hard they're willing to deal with uncomfortable emotions and uncomforts and uncertainty. Okay, if you're willing to really push past those zones of uncomfort and uncertainty, that's exactly uh, how you become the best. Yeah, it's a, it's a really massive point. It's come up so many times before, but that really can't be ignored. If you are watching this video um, and you suspect that you might be guilty of, of uh, essentially allowing yourself to become comfortable then you're not and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what before you get through that point a hundred percent of people are guilty of that including myself mm. I am still too comfortable on a daily basis if, I, if I'm honest with myself and I know you'll be honest with yourself Scott and say the same um, I think we can be more uncomfortable if we wanted to so mm. this is not to who is, feels that way it's 100 percent of people that are watching this are probably mm. living too comfortably to be quite honest yeah Probably, probably true, and everybody should review their own levels of comfort, but if you find yourself, particularly if you find yourself in a stagnant situation, if you think that you're in a rut poker-wise, uh, it might be because you're not making, well, essentially you're not pushing through the comfort barrier and making adequate changes to your game. So it's definitely worth considering. Um, I'll specifically, like, before we head on to the next one, we'll go to the next one in a second, I'll specifically um, talk about anybody that's playing less than $100 spins at this point if you're playing less than $100 spins at this point let's say you're watching this video you're at you're at um you know 20s 30s uh, 50s um, you're probably got lost in comfort somewhere mm. okay because when you when you enter poker and you're playing spinning goes and there's nothing stopping you from moving up besides your own work ethic and your results um, I think you can take a long, hard look in the mirror and say, you know what? I could be doing a lot more than what I'm doing right now. I could be improving a lot more. And all of us know how to improve. We know. Spend hours in the solver, spend hours studying Vimeo videos, 
spend out like just nonstop be growing your mind and then implementing things that you learn take notes like we all know the exact process of getting better yeah so why don't we do it that's the real question and it's really interesting I was watching one of my favorite youtubers the other day he says um, you know somebody like everyone knows how to lose weight lose weight is the biggest example right because mm -hmm. like there's so many overweight people in this world everyone knows how to lose weight so why don't they do it yeah isn't that the real question he goes he goes it's funny we were at a restaurant the other day everybody knows if we order dessert it's probably not that healthy mm -hmm. so why would we do it mm. but we know what to do but we do the opposite so where is this disconnect coming from is yeah. the interesting question and the disconnect is coming from a lack of discipline and also not wanting to be uncomfortable mm. yeah right we, we have this desire for comfort like we just want to be comfortable we want to be happy and we think that um, being comfortable is the way to do it mm -hmm. but it's one of the biggest illusions yeah. that we've ever been told ever because when you stay in your comfort zone, the problem with that is that you're always gonna be very limited, mm. very, very limited. I will tell you this um, firsthand. If you stay within your little comfort circle, whatever that may be, I'm not talking about just poker now, just in life, you're so limited to what life has to offer. Like you're so limited. There's only so much you can do because you're afraid to overstep your, your, your boundaries and be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that you're never going to be able to experience in life if you don't do that. So I strongly recommend um, giving yourself a slap in the face, a little David Goggins slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. David Goggins is probably like, himself, you know what? himself with a baseball it. bat. What's that, Scott? I said David Goggins would probably hit himself in the face with a baseball bat. He probably would. He probably would. <laughs> yeah, not a slap. I think he'd be a bit more vicious than that. But yeah. Uh, I, yeah, he uh, probably would. But sometimes we got to be honest with ourselves and really truthful with ourselves. And one of the one of the books that is coming up, on, I think it's going to be the one for uh, February, um, it's going to go deep into this topic right now about like being honest with yourself, just being truthful with yourself about where you're at and about how much of your potential are you actually reaching in poker and in life. And can you do more? And why haven't you been doing more? And and what are you going to do to change it? Right. I just okay. So let's, let's let's go to the next one. Just, here just before quickly we, uh, before that one, just yeah. another thing, just just to chew on the being truthful with yourself is super applicable to poker. We all have runs where we say this guy runs so good, or I always run bad at this spot, or something like that. Challenge okay. those things that you say to yourself. I have to do it all the time. I'm I'm a classic for that. I'm a classic one for bemoaning my luck and not being entirely truthful with myself. And sometimes I'll say out loud, like, oh, this, this motherfucker ran so good against me. And then I'm in the shower after the grind that I'm like, I don't think I played particularly well there. And I'm thinking it, but it's like, I can feel the resistance, you know? Like I'm yeah. just, when, I, when I have an honest moment where I have to admit to myself that I didn't play well or I made a mistake, there's resistance, there's massive resistance and like, like on a subconscious on a natural level I just want to blame external forces and spare myself the pain of admitting that I was incompetent in any given because situation it hurts you it hurts it your does. identity it does big time it hurts your identity you're, you're, you're in your mind you're Scott Wobblepig you know the best fish player in the world one of the best rec players in the world so if you make a mistake like it really hurts yeah and the key, the key is like this there's like a really fine line here you want to be honest with yourself, but you don't want to beat yourself up about it. You want to tell yourself once, you know, if I'm honest with myself, I'm not doing what I'm capable of and I can do a lot more and this is how I'm going to change it and then just change it. Mm. That's it. Tough no balance. beating yourself up, no, you know, punching yourself. When I say slap yourself in the face, I mean like metaphorically. <laughs> I'm not, I don't literally mean, no, why am I doing this, blah, 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 you start punching yeah. yourself. I mean more in terms of like pour some cold water in your face and, and really yeah. be honest. Be you, know? you need to be philosophical about it. 
It usually takes me like 10, 15 minutes after the grind if it hasn't gone well to, to stop beating myself up. But I always make a point of like having a stoic moment where I'm like, okay, what would a stoic do in my situation? How would they address this problem? And usually I can calm myself down with that kind of thought process. But if you're, if you're the type of person that you naturally, um, that you get very emotional about poker and a lot of people are, and I'm no different, I get really emotional about it. Uh, yeah, definitely be more willing to admit to yourself that you made a mistake without being too hard on yourself. And that's what I do. I either lie to myself to, to cover the pain or I admit I made a mistake and then give myself help. And, and finding a balance between those two things, I think, is very much the sweet spot, like Jack was saying.